Hey Internet, Jesse at Ish Guitars here with Marcel from F-Bass. We are in their facility here in Canada, which is only a couple hours away from our shop actually. And we're gonna give ourselves a little tour. This is my first time here and I'm very excited to see what's going on. Yeah. Sorry it's not snowing for you. Kind of really set the vibe, <laughs> dark and gray and yeah, exactly. wet. This room's a lot of fun. It's our fingerboard room, our top, or some of our tops, like our reserve tops. Mm -hmm. That stack behind you there yep. is a stack of Gaboon Ebony. Cool. I've been sitting on for about a decade or so now. So uh, and they're all waxed right now. Interesting. Yep. Sitting on for a decade, why? Oh, sorry, the, the inventory is about twice that size. Oh. Yeah, so, so yeah. We'll, <laughs> I was we'll, going to say, is that the drying time yeah. or something of, of ebony? Like, what the it, heck? It does take a while, yes. We'll have boards sit, they might dry, they might come in cured. Yeah. Yep. Between 4 to 6% moisture content, which is what we need. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we might get in at like 20 plus percent, where it might need to sit for a few months, a few years. So this actually sat for, uh, it was like a couple of years before we could actually get to it. Right. And because it's waxed in, it takes a bit longer. Uh, yeah, really black, really dense, great stuff. Uh, we've got cool. actually a few really cool things. So bird's eye maple. Show me your favorite things. The Brazilian rosewood. Yeah, let's see. Uh, which oh, we can't that, ship that. over the border, but oh. if it's within Canada, um, this is. A, Wait, I can't take that home. What the heck? I mean, I guess we could if you just kind of keep it on the down low. Yeah, that's where we cut the filming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so this was imported through Montreal in 1966. It cool. was a, a furniture manufacturer was retiring. Yeah. It's kind of sitting on it being like, ah, this could be my retirement fund. So we jumped on it. We were looking for a few years and finally found a really good piece. We got a few. Is that your only piece? Here. This is our only piece. That's so yeah. cool. And we've got this little stack over here as well. Yeah. And what I love showing people is the difference in tone. Because like, oh, you know, why is Brazilian so expensive? Why does everyone, why is it so coveted? Yeah. Um, so we've got AAA grade East Indian. Great stuff. Um, tonally a little different. So if you listen to the ping, I'll make it obvious with my knuckle. Hope it comes across. So a relatively, no, in our experience, a pretty bright board for Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Brazilian. So listen for the ping. Way different. Sounds like a piece of glass. Yeah. So really, really dense. Completely different. Uh, it's, I mean, it's so old, it's, it's done all of its moving. Right. Uh, but we're still, still metering everything, make sure it's, it's ready to use. You have to make sure the grain is very straight with the edge of the fingerboard. You don't want this grain run off, you get twisted boards. Mm -hmm. uh, not the best. So we've got 1966 Brazilian Rosewood. That's cool. AAA grade East Indian. Mm -hmm. We've got Macassar Ebony down here, mm -hmm. uh, which is really great. We're seeing, we're seeing this just kind of skyrocket lately, where it sort of sits it sits in between maple and rosewood. Really? Uh, tonally. It's a really tight, really clean bottom end. The, the high end is articulate, kind of like maple, but it's a lot warmer. Uh, and the mid-range seems to be a, you know, a bit flatter, not pokey like a rosewood or a maple. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. I've always been a big fan of Macastro, obviously, just like for the look, the, right? the, Yeah, the, the streaking is really, really nice. So it's interesting, um, you know, some of your report on the, the, the tone wood change of it also, too. Which is super crucial, actually. You know, obviously, pickups, preamp, design, like scale length, those are going to play a huge factor in how it's going to sound. Of course. Um, but, yeah, don't, look, don't overlook the, uh, the fingerboard, as small as they may be. It's where your vibrations are stemming from. We're, we're hearing a difference from the, uh, from the fingerboard for is sure. Is that why the fingerboard room's like right at the front door? <laughs> yeah, yeah, first decision right here. It's uh, really interesting to, to hear you say that because like I don't, I can't say I've heard another builder say that before specifically about fingerboards. Like and it's interesting because every builder always has their thing where they're like, well, it's the, you know, the density of the neck or it's the, the, this or the, the that. The species or like of the wood or, you know, where, yeah, where it's grown. Everybody or, has their like, their trick of like what they really focus on. Yep. So it's really interesting to hear you say the fretboards. Super interesting. Yeah, so important. I'd say, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a, a smaller detail, but all these small details amount to something quite tangible. Yeah. Um, so definitely not want to overlook the importance of the fingerboard. Uh, we've got some Pale Moon Ebony fingerboards I, I as well. I did see this. Which is... Is this new? New for we, us, We had yeah. the Pale Moon topped base that we had from you, but I don't think it had a Pale Moon board. Yes, the guys ripped these up. Pretty recently, this stuff was taking quite a while to dry. We got it in at, I think, like 25% or so. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought, yeah, maybe six months. I know Palmoon and Zero Cody takes a takes long time. Takes so long. How long was this? This was about a year or so. Yeah. Um, you know, typically, they'll, they'll rip the boards around, once they're at 10%, you can rip them and they can expedite that drying, the last few percent. Yep. Um, probably did this a bit prematurely, around like 15%, just to, just to expedite the drying. 
That's super cool. So well, now I know. You. Now I know what I'm putting on our builds later. Yeah, no, <laughs> these, these are like blown up right now. Yeah. They're so popular. They sound great. Yeah. Um, we're also doing pale. Oh, sorry, uh, purple heart for the first time. I love purple boards. heart. Yeah. Purple heart's a great fingerboard. No, it's neat. It is kind of show the camera here. I've, I've done. I've done a lot of building with purple heart. It's one of my absolute favorite tone woods. It's, it's like. And it looks cool. It looks really cool. For us, I mean, it's uh, not as exciting to work with because every time you sand, if you look at the board there, it's quite brown. Yep. Um, but as it oxidizes, you look at the uh, the edge of these here. This is a good example. Yeah, that's your oxidized. It's mm -hmm. been exposed. This has been stacked on. So see the difference. So when we're building, right. you know, as it's being sanded, you're kind of sanding off the oxidation and that purple look. Right. Uh, so as long as lead time may be now, you know, once the guy sand it before it goes in the booth, yep. it's got to age for another couple months before it gets that purple oxidation. That's super cool. And you can though. get some figuring in, in Purple Heart too sometimes, which is cool. Yeah. It look, always is a really interesting look. So some pretty exciting ones for us because we're just very traditional. We love Mac Ebony, Rosewood, Maples. Yep. Uh, it took us a while to, to finally warm up to these, but they've been turning out great so far. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to, ah, oh, some pretty cool fingerboards here. Hey. This is Paul, Paul. Paul. Jesse, <laughs> Amar. So here's a pale moon that's sort of oxidized by now. That's Getting, gorgeous. Getting more and more purple. That big, huge six string neck. Yeah. The, uh, our six strings were always made at 19 mil spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, extrapolate it onto a six string, the board gets kind of wide. Oh yeah. Uh, so we've been slowly tapering the neck over the years. Now the, the nut width went from 54 to 52, uh, but we left the string spacing at 19. We went 94 mil uh, wide at the uh, last fret. 18 mil string spacing brings us down to about 80, 89 millimeters wide. So not a huge difference, but tangible in the hand. Right. Uh, right. So what else do we have here? We've got. This is really great stuff. Is this some roasted uh, yeah, roasted, roasted bird eye? We're getting this stuff from out east from a uh, actually a supplier named John Lennon. <laughs> Not reincarnated or anything, but it's uh, he's, really, he's got really great roasted. Yeah, I mean roasted is, has like Palmo, right? So popular right now. Really People love it. Up. You know, it adds a little bit of something to it. You know, it's like it's aesthetically so. So maple is relatively some will see it as like a, like the plain Jane fingerboard to go for, but yep. tonally, there's no replacing a maple. Yeah. Snappy, great mid range. So that's cool to get a darker aesthetic. Um, I mean, we'll get it in cured to pretty much what we need it to be. Um, th there's this perception that you get roasted, it's going to be the most stable thing ever. One, it's still wood. And two, if you're curing your other wood to the right degree, yeah, there should be any issues time, There should anyway. be any issues anyway. So, yep, I agree. Um, really great stuff. I love the roasted. It smells cool. amazing when guys cut into it out back. Yeah, it smells like maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dang, good place. So you got Brent in the corner there, Dan, John, Igor, uh, Laura. Colin's hiding in the booth right now. We'll probably poke our heads in and take That's a look. Super cool. Yeah. That's a pretty big shop. And actually, it all starts in this back corner. You're going to love this because we keep our tops back here. Oh, cool. Uh, Do you have any Purple Heart tops by chance? We should. Because that fretboard already got me thinking. And oh, let's get a full. Yeah. Yeah, what's better than a Purple Heart fretboard is adding it to a top. So we built our necks here. Not the most exciting to look at, uh, but it's such a crucial point in production because they you know, were brought in, they sit for a little bit of time, month or two. They're ripped, paired, dated, sit for a month or two, and then glued up as three-piece quarters on necks. Okay, usually. cool. So you do actually glue up your necks because I know there's, again, some, some builders that they buy them already done. So it's interesting that you're doing it yourselves. Yeah, and the idea is you, you want to have control over this board moving at each stage. Right. So if you rush this process, you're gonna have a neck that you're gonna be chasing setups with for so long. Right. Uh, and there, there were some permutations of this where we'll do a five piece neck with Bubinga or uh, Wenge. Bubinga we don't do anymore, it's on CITES. Um, or there might be boards where it might have a, an odd stain that we can't use unless someone orders a very specific spec. So some of these necks will sit here for upwards of Seven years, we got 2015 next year, 2014. Yeah. Uh, so, been stabilized for years and years. Really solid, and uh, kind of swing for like their next new home, essentially. Right. Yes. Super cool. Yeah. And you see all the date stamps on here. That's 
pretty neat. We've got roasted for the next. Pretty light roast. Some more roasted. Yep, Wendy's Wendy stringers in here. Yep. And we got Super a longer cool. board for the next room that's ready to go. Right. Yeah, that's like the largest piece it's of wood in the huge. world. It's huge. It's got some weight on it. Okay. <laughs> it's massive. Okay. And they get profiled down. What is this little, little thing? Uh, good question. That looks like a big old piece of Brazilian if you ask me. <laughs> no, no, no. I wish. Just kind of in our own shop. It has that kind of Brazilian -y type of you know, real it, dark it, it liner. It does. But it's something else. Yeah. What we have, which we also can't ship any longer. Um, I mean, not. We came with the Canada. Yeah. But uh, you, were, you know, we're respecting CITES. Of course. Uh, You're good, respectful folks up if here. It, yeah. If it's endangered, we're not going to use it. You're nice Canadians. <laughs> so, you want to check this out? This is our top library. So one of them. Oh, cool. So we've got Ooh. Bacote. Oh, it's a little, little dusty. All right, I already want that. <laughs> I already want it. Looks really cool, really dense. Uh, not the best to work with. It's very greasy and oily. So what you're saying is, if I order this, you'd be mad at me. Uh, these will be the last two for a while. I think. <laughs> yeah, really greasy, really smelly. Uh, this is a really cool one. Super cool. Yeah, those are both killer. I think we're kind of in between our Mac Ebony stock right now. Um, we got a couple cool pieces still kicking. So around. now, obviously, you already have these uh, uh, book matched, uh, uh, yeah, book matched, and, you know, uh, uh, laid out here. So, are you when you're getting these these woods, are you actually ripping them, planting them into these pieces? Yeah. Or like, are you starting with a log? Basically, is what I'm trying to say. We're essentially getting like a, a large blank, like a large slab. Yeah. Uh, from our from our suppliers, then they'll be book matched whenever the timing's right based on the moisture content. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll just kind of inventory them as, as soon as we can while respecting, uh, you know, just the woods age and humidity. Yeah, of course. Our moisture Super content. Cool. I love the caster. Cool. That's a nice piece. It's a little different. Typically oh, you see a lot more of like the blacks with a bit of brown. Yeah. Well, look at this one too. That one. Oh. oh, that's so cool. That's super cool. Screw up here. If you guys have a Mac Ebony on order, you should have yeah. pulled it out of that stack. Then maybe we'll go back and check it out. You guys are looking for a really dark yep. top. Could have skipped ahead. Oh, that had our name on it, actually. With a question oh, mark? this is the one. <laughs> yeah, Fish yeah. Guitars question mark? So this hasn't, uh, yeah, it's not close to production yet. It's about, uh, I'd say it's about five months away from entering production. Yeah. But yeah, this will be reserved for you guys and be brought to that room. Super nice, cool. good eye. Another one of those. I can see my name from a mile away. <laughs> I smell it, I sense yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're also in between Pelham and Ebony. It was so popular that we just plundered our first batch so quickly. Yeah. So I'll show you a slab that we got back there. Cool. Uh, it's still, it's trucking along. I think we brought it down from 30 to like 20%. Yeah, uh, so yeah it, but it has so It's long. about like six to 12 months away, I think, before we can cut into Man, it. Man, there's such cool stuff in here. That's sick. Yeah, the burly stuff's really nice. This is a newer slab that we got. That was a bit more plain, but yeah, this one's nuts. And it is very pinky, but as it oxidizes, it goes like a golden orangey brown. Yeah, uh, I like the pink. I think it's cool. Uh, there's a wood, uh, the, uh, they'll call it Japanese maple that Federa uses sometimes. It has like like that pink, pink in swirl it. in it. Yeah, oh, super cool. So nice. So this. Yeah. Oh, so this this is a neck through. A uh, blank? Oh no, is that this, what this, was, is? this was a piece that was sort of like last in the in the, uh, in the slab, not quite wide enough for what we needed, so a little center taper was added. And, uh, so you'll it, keep this in here when you put the top in? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah, if someone's into that, that three-piece center taper. So it's a, a piece of redwood down the center of it. So pearl redwood with quilted wood, redwood quilted in the center. Redwood, yeah. That's a super interesting idea. And nice to be able to preserve that piece of wood so it's right as, as much as we can, yeah. Yeah, was, we, only, we only have so many of them, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's a neat one. So this is going to come to life when you, I'm not sure if that's coming across. Yeah, as of course, without putting finish. some water on it, it's not yeah. going to pop. Yeah, you guys have some really unique 
It's you know, pretty cool. That's super cool. Really tight grain, but it's still got the, the quilted uh, super, figure super on top. Cool. It, it's interesting because, again, being at various different like suppliers, you can see, or at various different builders, you can see their different like style and what woods they pick, right? Because any luthier, the lifeblood of what they do is their wood. Right? Yeah, that's where it all so, starts. But some guys will, will, you can tell what they're into, you know, maybe it's maples, maybe it's, you know, really good flames, really good quilts, and yep. then some people it's more exotic stuff, and some people it's like, so it's kind of interesting, you guys have like these really, really unique grains that you don't really see in a lot of, Thanks. a lot of other builders, which yeah. is kind of, kind of neat. We try to keep it fresh. I mean, Buckeye even like, has even always like, been the most popular. Right, because like, like Buckeye is like, it's like that whole crazy thing, each piece looks different, but it's interesting because like Redwood, you know, a lot of times you think of Redwood and you think of this certain type of look, and you just show me like five different pieces that look completely different. They're so that, different, yeah. Which is so cool to me, because that's the stuff like, I like. Nice. You know, looking for something unique. This is going to be so great. Yeah, yeah exactly. as opposed to like the very straight grain Redwood that's sort of pinky in color, exactly. which I know you like, but uh, when you get all the swirlies and burlies and, yeah. and figure on top, it's so nice. Yeah, so we'll really just, unique pieces. We're going to skip ahead. And there are some different ones still. Right, like. Like here would be your more like your more traditional like quilted That's, redwood. Yeah, very much so. Right, which is beautiful when you when you put a little stain on it, like a little dash of oh, walnut yeah. stain or something, you know. It just comes out absolutely amazing. I love that stuff also too. It's just it's cool to see the, the mix of it, you know. So what what else is in here? Redwood sinker. Oh, so this is great. So we've got some sinker redwood. We're gonna throw our first batch, run our second batch. So this is redwood. That's about a century old. It's been reclaimed from a Northern California river. Oh, that's all the stuff you were showing us. This is the stuff I got our AC Classic out front. Super cool. Yeah, I'll show you a few pieces. Yeah, so that was a log in the bottom of the lake. Or uh, a river in this case. Yeah. Super cool. Really dark. All that just like natural deviation from, from the original. Yep. Darker, more interesting grain. Here's uh, yeah, a bit more of a closer to traditional. Yep. And they had so much darker when they're when they're lacquered. Super gorgeous. Yeah, so we got a handful of those. Amazing. Love those. Let me see some of this I'm excited to see this chestnut. So we got some chestnut, which we don't do often. This is kind of a neat one. So have those who like buckeye but want a bit more of a blonde yeah. look. Well chestnut's a funny wood because you can get you don't think of it having so much variation, but you can find that pretty commonly in it actually. Yeah, typically you'll find pieces more like this guy here. That's a bit there. Yep. A bit more plain Jane, but such a creamy color. Yeah. It's so good finished. Yeah, it's just a unique uh, uh, color, I think, in the wood world. Yep. Still some curlies on the edges. Yep. Yeah, I was hoping you pulled that one. Much, out. much more figure. <laughs> That's amazing. That's an incredible piece of wood. Yeah. It's more of that pink you were mentioning too. Yep. I don't know. Maybe should we set this one aside? Maybe? I was literally just gonna say, is it cool if we just stick that over there yeah, for a second? Yeah. <laughs> we'll check them all out. Well, don't hurt my wood. What are you doing? That's, uh, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I think we know a few guys who can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is a sister piece. It looks like. Yeah. With a bit more, well, with quite a bit more of that. Uh, yeah, I like this. One. I like this one better. Yeah, it's cleaner. Okay, so some spalted maples. This one we've been calling the Grinch for years. Uh, <laughs> I you haven't, haven't got anyone to buy it yet. No, not yet. <laughs> it's got a whole face in it. Yes, that's that's a figured spalted maple. That's a kind of has like piece. a myrtle thing going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got. Let me show you a bit more of a traditional small to maple. It's just a veneer, but yeah. Ooh, really cool shape, yeah. That is super cool. Well, the thing is, you end up with a bridge that ends up right there, right? You do, yeah. I mean, the the bridge pickup does get cut out at the top itself, so there's no interruption in terms of the grain pattern. Right. But a bridge is going to cover up. Right there. Where's the, cool. the tail, the floating tail piece on the AC, uh, the newer AC base? That would help. 
yeah. theoretically, right? It comes like right to the very bottom, it does. doesn't it? But the clamshell comes out pretty high. Oh, so I mean, you will see some of this, and then the, the bridge is going to be around, around there. So That might not be a bad idea. Set it aside. I should probably just, yeah. probably just put it over there. Just, you know. Just in case. Just in case, for some reason. Some cool. Burled maple. Some more burled maple. Burl maple gets gets so fun once you put some colors over it. It does. It pops like crazy. Spalted yep. maple. That's it there. Oh, this looks great with a finish over top of it. Really this, wild. This is a burl maple. It's a burl maple, yeah. Wow. That's funky. That's a really unique piece. Yeah, we've done one in transparent green. It looked incredible. I, did somebody draw a face on it? Yeah, I think Dan, <laughs> I think Dan drew that. Look, see, we got a nose. Look at. We all see something different. <laughs> That's amazing. So if you think trans finish, or I'd be, something. Do you have pictures of that other base that you did? I do. Yeah. I'd be interested to see what so that looks like. We'll set it aside too. We can always put back whatever we're not. Yeah, of course. Claiming, right? It's a Buckeye. Uh, I mean, you've probably seen this a million times over, but of course. there's so many different patterns that you get. This is neat. It's almost like a watercolor. Yeah, absolutely. It's like this like murky, rustic looking koa. Yep. And another classic with that heartwood down the center. Yeah. Tight grain. You can't beat that. And this stuff just absolutely pops in the booth. I think the most. You're, when you're spraying it, you're When you're spraying it, yeah. yeah. Super cool. We'll overlook those. It's a little bit more plain Jane. Really clean. Cool. That um, would be very cool with a purple heart board. That'd be amazing, actually. Yeah. So not fully oxidized yet. You can see the, the color on the side is the full yep. oxidized. But I want to show you this crazy walnut we've got. Uh, English walnut. <laughs> Sorry. All the sawdust. Wow, that's cool. That's a neat one. But there's one specifically. I was like, I see a bunch of birds in here. Yeah, here we go. I'm kind of secretly hoping someone orders this eventually. Oh, yeah. that's Good incredible. Oh, that's bird's incredible. eyes and beats. So, are you, with these with these holes here, would you fill them? They'll get epoxied. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you're just gonna do like a, some type of just, just like a really black dark filler or black something. or dark brown. That's, this gets a lot darker. That's a really nice piece. Yeah. You should probably keep it out. Okay. Yeah. That's a it's a good idea. You I know, there's just, like one top you guys get. Yeah. It's gotta be. Yeah. I mean, just, no no pressure, but just put it over there. That's a good. I look. think this is the top you want us to build with. <laughs> Absolutely. I, mean, I don't know why no one's picked it yet. That's amazing. Maybe it's too crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Not too crazy for me. What about the uh, colored pencil guitar? <laughs> uh, this is a prototype design. This uh, is the new model that's coming out. <laughs> so this is John's. He, uh, he had a bunch of pencil crowns. Like, oh, I'd, I'd like to do one of those cool project pencil crown builds. Um, <laughs> yeah, not in, in, like an official F based thing. It's sort of like his personal project. But check out the weight on this thing. It's mostly epoxy. Oh my god! So this all is that so space heavy. in between is epoxy. Holy crap! Man, that's just the body too. Can you imagine with the pickups and everything on oh, it? Yeah. It's so heavy. You want to feel it? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> wow. Very interested to see what uh, what that's going to sound like when it's done. But hey, you never know. It might sound great. Good. Really dense stuff. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait for him to finish that one. Is this some wenge for boards or something? These are wenge for the five piece. Oh, for uh, the stringers. The stringers. Yeah. Do you ever do like a wenge neck? Like a solid wenge neck they, or wenge um, board? Typically too compressed, too heavy. Wenge is so heavy. Yeah. That you're, no matter what you do, you're probably going to get into a neck dive territory. Yeah, yeah. So we don't love it as a full neck. Um, do feels love the stringers. Feels but. and sounds so good. But I yeah, know. stringers are perfect. All right, what's next? We'll show you guys to the spray booth. Sure. Yes. Excuse us. I love block inlays on F bases are so good. Thanks. They're getting a little bit better, even. They're getting better? They're getting better. Tighter, cleaner. Yeah. Um, especially when you're doing toroid on a maple. Typically, you know, it's really hard to get around seeing the, the black line, that yep. blue joint. Uh, inlaying, people don't realize how tough inlay is. Getting pretty it's pretty tricky. Difficult stuff. Yeah. So you're familiar with this guy. It's, it's a pill moon. I've been going in the soon. Oh, yes. That is awesome. Bird's eye board. What a killer! Look at that! Look at this headstock. Oh, that's 
So little lumen lay side dots. That's killer. So those are gonna glow green in the, in the dark. What a sick base. And that's a, a neck through. The five piece maple Wenge neck. Yeah, with the Wenge in there. Let's wow, that. that is a sick piece. Poking at the bottom there. Yep. And it's been given a, an alder tone block as well. I, I'm a believer in the tone block. It's so important. It really does something. I'm, I'm into it. Even as like a center taper, I mean, to even much more noticeable as a center taper. We'll take a body like this, for instance. You know, and you'd assume because there's more mahogany meat on the wings that it's going to sound more like a mahogany body. But for us, I think we're hearing more of the, t the tone block, the center block. Yeah. Absolutely. And Ash is amazing. It's just so tight, focused. Yeah. Really good canvas to like build your tone out of. Yeah. This is a really cool three piece body. Yeah, we'll do a lot of those. These, will, these are typically oiled. Right. And of course, like your guys' finishes are, I feel like, it's funny because I feel like you guys have a couple things that you're really known for, like the pickup thing you're really known for, um, but then some of your finishes are just so incredible. Like the transparent opaque finishes are so cool. Like they're not opaque, they're like transparent opaque. Yeah. They're so amazing. All the grain fill stuff, so much work that you do with ash. Um, That's a darker one. There's just, just some of the colors and some of the way that they're done is, is so cool to me because it references like classic, but it's very modern. Taking like some chances, but not like totally outside. Exactly, the norm. I love it so much. It's like the perfect, I think it's the perfect thing for like base. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It can be sort of as loud as you want within a degree, or it's yeah. like it's look like a sunburst rosewood all their 60s. Yeah, exactly. No problem. So yeah, I mean, we do like to take advantage of, of ash. And the, the, the pores are so large and deep that you yeah, can enhance it with whatever color. Yeah. Um, typically we'll do black and then do a transparent color over top. The grain just pops, or we can do it. It's called the Cerise technique. Where it's is like, that how you say it? Cherouzi. I've, never, under, I've yeah. never understood how to say it. <laughs> it's, it's an old it's French a, technique. I'm learning all these French words today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my French is like out the window. It's, it's I don't want to say poutine though, so that counts. It does. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the Cerise technique is we'll, we'll go black and then enhance the grain, typically with white, just the highest contrast. Yep. But we can have fun with like hot pinks and green and, and gold. Yeah. Yeah, well that's something I really want to mess with is some of that some of that fill color. Because we can do a lot with that. Oh, I, knew you were I have, I have a couple so things cool. to I'll tell you off camera that are great ideas. Sneaky Top sneaky. Secret. Yeah, super secret. This is Colin Spring. Hey. <laughs> okay, so what do we have in there? Right, solid black, you got the natural with the black grain in hands, sort of as we come up. Candy apple red, um, brown burst. You can't really see right now, but that's been really, really popular for us. It's a standard finish. Yeah. The grain pops like crazy, but if you don't want it to look like but a beautiful. coffee table, you've yeah. got a bit more finishing Gorgeous. on the edges. Now I see binding on that base on the top. Yes. With a flat top, what is that? So when you do binding, uh, we need a flat top edge. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so we'll do we'll do body binding in you know, typically white, black, tortoise. Uh, we have done the the wood. You know, Dan will sort of steam bend the one around for, for binding. Um, it's not often that we do that, but we're also doing flat tops where you don't need binding. Right. Uh, we'll do that for those who want to have a, a two-tone finish. Right, so they might want a certain color on top, but they want to keep the back Different natural. Color on the back. Right, so you can make a tape line. Yeah, exactly, yeah, we, we need yeah. that hard break edge. What's the color of this base on the right side that's like two from the top, that's all by itself? Um, that's probably a charcoal burst. Oh, sorry, no, you know what? That is our multi, here we'll see them upstairs so this like is this top color secret? shifting no 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 we're going to release this so soon we yeah. a bunch of different colors but it's mold it's a metallic uh color shifting iridescent finish. that's what i thought it might be yeah in which case we're going to order a bunch of those <laughs> their catalog is so great we're kind of like oh they got this color now let's try that uh but wait there's also these five other colors you want to try right in due time uh the first batch is going to be it's called Blue iris, where it's blue and purple. Super cool. Uh, these are gonna have purple heart finger points as well. Oh, super cool. Yeah. And this base down here on the bottom has a single music man pickup in it. It, looks it like. does. Yeah, custom order. Uh, it's gonna be a fretless, uh, single pickup music man. What uh, a cool spec. Based on the VF series. Yeah, that's a really neat one. Don't that's a every super day. cool spec base. Thanks. It's like an off menu item. But uh, uh, it's it's there for those who are. Well, if there's anyone who's good at asking for off menu items. 
<laughs> yeah, same for the, you know, I got you on that. <laughs> for the, uh, the splittable humbucker thing, we do uh, our own F-Base pickup. So in the Deluxe series, Deluxe BN series, we've got two humbucker pickups. Right. They're splittable three ways. So we felt that for us, that kind of filled this this pocket that we weren't quite in. Right. Uh, but the traditional Vian Aguilar pickup is still there for those who are... Of course. Or of course. Yeah. Well, then in that case, we could do it with just one of your one of your pickups in the, in the Music Man we position. Could. We could. That'd be cool. Custom. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. Oh, this is the pickup covers. Yeah, so covers match to the, uh, the body here. Yeah. That's gorgeous. So really dark roasted ash. This is our first batch. So this is our second batch. Uh, first batch is like a medium roasted. So there's no finish on this? No finish, no. Wow, that's really dark roasted. Yeah, the darkest we've had. Very, it, it can get kind of brittle when the guys are working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to go for things that are a little bit lighter uh, yep. in, in color. So yeah, next batch is, uh, first batch is medium and darkness. These are quite dark. And uh, the newest, as I said, the lightest we've gotten so far. Right. Cool. Oh, good call. So this is your crazy ash. Oh, nice. For the uh, the deluxe. Oh, wow, they already cut it. Yep. Super cool. We just picked this out like two days ago. <laughs> Still deciding on the finish. Yeah, which we have to flush that out in a minute. Yeah. But yeah, no, no need to panic. You know, cutting out so much at the top, like oh my god, where's the rest of the guy? Right, because uh, it's going to get filled back it, over. It, once. It's going to be capped on pickups. Right. When you're head on, it'll be seamless. Super cool. Yeah. Such a funky, funky, cool piece of ash. And this is That's a nice well. piece of ash. <laughs> quite. Uh, <laughs> an equally nice piece of walnut. One, it's popping. You can't quite see the figure in this one. Yeah. This is also going to be for you guys. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of tight grain in here that you don't see. Yeah. Yeah, you see it once you get finished yeah. on it. That's super cool. That would be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll land on a color. It's gonna look, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna look so good with it. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. <laughs> As I fall downstairs on camera. Yeah, no railings. It's a, uh, it was once a tobogganing oh. hill. It's a different, <laughs> different time. Oh, this is super cool. Yes, yeah, so these are up from the Trans booth. white with a black binding. That's really hot. Yeah. Actually, you guys have had one of these. One of the first, uh, one of those first three. Like, yeah, that's the, that one I, that's the one I was playing. I yeah. told you it was amazing. And this is the new color. So that's the new color. Not sure if it's coming across on camera there, but if you move I know, around. they're always so tough to get. It's my problem. Color shift stuff. So that's the, the purple and blue oh, color shift. Cool. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been buffed, so a little, a little messy, but. That's so cool. That's coming across. Nice. Super cool. Yes, 335 for eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. So from the booth, they'll come up here, sit for about a week or so before they can get to you know, wet sanding, buffing, polishing. There's the flat top for the two tone finish. Yep. And it says it's a 33 inch flat top, so I'm assuming a 33 inch scale. 33 inch scale. Yep. Oof, that's gonna be a great base. I love 33. 33.3 inch scales are amazing. Just, just short enough, you know, you're not going so short where everything's kind of big and boomy sounding or the, the tension feels very loose. And yep. Very tidy. The oh, hey, here's Ish Guitars. So this is yours, yep. This is your oh. Auburn Burst Fretless VF5. Oh, that's going to be a great bass. Which also has matching shells. So it's, they're loaded on the black traditional shells, but you got the... Uh, oh, cool, there they are. The matched oh, veneer on that's top. cool. So you actually... Put that onto a plastic cover. Yeah, yeah, huh. so it fits great, um, but you got the aesthetic of the uh, of the body. That is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, a lot trickier than it than it looks. Too. I, I know that's why yeah. I'm so excited. Like this is like somebody watching this would probably be like, why is he so stoked yeah. about this? <laughs> and what's but, like, cool too is no pull pieces, so it's a very clean playing surface. This is the coolest thing ever. You've got two of those. I can't say I've actually seen this before. Yeah, no, not many, not many do it. The, the hard part too is, you know, you're putting wood on plastic and you're, you're spraying clear on it. Yeah. So you've got to approach it very carefully. You also don't want to build up too much finish because if you're screwing that in the body. Of know, course, yeah, you'll, it won't you'll, fit. It might flake off. Oh, no, I mean, this is perfect. It looks, I mean, it looks like it was just existed this yeah, way. You know what I'm saying? Like, those. this is absolutely, the, the finish work, like, to be able to see it in person is, is amazing. 
So there's one already loaded. This is on so cool. A base of yours. Check this out. Okay, so That's this one is number. done. So it needs to go through the <coughs> uh, QC. But oh, <laughs> <laughs> the matte, uh, the matte sea foam green matching shell. Oh my layer. god, this is amazing. Oh, this is so sick. Can I play it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> this, yeah. is a, oh. <laughs> this is so sick. Oh, I love. Oh, I love everything about this. Why not hit this mic? So still needs a setup. Still needs a second setup. Um, We'll sit for you know at least a couple weeks to allow things to settle and Ooh, yeah. Ah, oh, in satin too. I love the 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 plastic knobs along with the with the the small gold knobs. Yeah, it's just, such a just cool to break touch. it up visually. The gold perloid pickup pick guard. This is so cool. Like what a vibey modern classic, freaking awesome. Yeah, I love the uh, the two tone hardware on the back. Mm-hmm. Black and gold. Oh, this is so sick. You've outdone yourselves. And the, I love the Seafone pickups in the yeah. Yeah, in the pit guard. It's but such a cool one. They look one. like they've almost been like poked from behind. Yeah. Is the, is the goal. Oh, that is such a cool look. That's so exciting. Yeah. So <laughs> this is going to sell so, this is gonna sell so fast. Okay, also. The evergreen, yes. That is like my favorite color ever. I have a car that's kind of the oh, same yeah. color as that. What kind of car? Well, two of them actually. <laughs> one's a Porsche and one's a Bentley. Wow, and these but are original kind of colors? Yes. No. Way. I love I love greens. Excellent. And so like misty green colors are my thing. Nice. So that's like a, a very cool obviously it's like more of an olive drive, but I don't know where to put oh, this. Oh yeah. Grab it. Um that is yeah, it's such a good looking right. color. And then this is on a roasted ash body too, I think, this right? This one is in alder body, actually. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah, so evergreen matte flat top oh, with an so alder hot. body. That's so hot. Roasted ash neck. Yep. Or sorry, roasted maple neck. This is a rosewood fingerboard. Gorgeous. Like what a clean, but it's like it's like tough though too. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's like, like earthy, it's like badass, it's like a military look. It's like everything you could want. Oh, I love that so much. I'm glad you like this color. It's, it's a new one. I know, I saw, I just, well, it's funny because I, I know it just had come out and I saw it just the other day when I was working on builds. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I want it. I'm, that's absolutely going to be on an order. So sick. Actually, you've got one on order. I think as a transparent, we'll double check. No, but that's a, but if that's not, a different, that's a different color. That's a different, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do the solid opaque. Oh, this is a new one too. Um, so, I mean, we're not, we're not shy with getting into, you know, different scale lengths and, and different string spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, though, is quite the shorty. So we'll typically do a 33 or 30, 32 and a half. 30? This is a 30.75 inch scale. 30.75? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. String through, just to allow for medium scale strings to right. fit. A little bit easier to find. And to, to help change the, uh, like, the brake angle over the saddle, mm -hmm. which helps with the... Like perceived tension on yeah. the right hand. Like I said, perceived tension. Yeah, because the, I, I the agree. guys out there, yes. the string compliance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't change the tension, the pitch isn't changing. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, check that out. Pretty light, too. I think that's about seven and a yeah, quarter super, pounds. Super light. It's like borderline travel base. Please. I actually really don't even. It doesn't feel like a shorty. It does, in terms it, of like the string tension, right? Yeah, it really does not feel like, I mean, that short, especially because usually they get really floppy. Yeah. Now with the right strings, the right tension there, strings to the back of the body, the right gauge strings, you, you can counteract those things. Yeah. And as long as you're, you're achieving sort of like a, you know, let's say at, at least 35 to 50 pound exactly. tension on it. Yep. It'll, it'll still play great. Yep, exactly. I love these wood inlays and stuff too. See all that. Oh, and then there's a custom, yeah, some you, sort you of custom check some inlay. Too. Okay, so this is a walnut top. It's going to be a deluxe model with the humbucking pickups. 
But you also wanted matching block inlays. That's so cool. For example, fingerboard. So can I ask, you don't make any tilt back headstocks. No, so we get that like that volute drop. Which I think is so interesting, right? Because so many builders are all about that angled headstock. Yep. Is there a reason why? I mean, uh, I'm the original, there is. Yeah, the original <laughs> design uh, of my dad's. One, it was also to uh, to not waste wood having such an angled headstock. Of course. You lose so much mass. Yep. Uh, but he found that way with the thicker volute. Um, and you do have this drop and a slight angle to increase that tension. Yep. Uh, without needing a string tree. Just the design worked. No need to change the oh, string I see. trees. So it's a very, very, very minor. Very minor angle after yep. that deep drop. Huh. I, same thing. I've never seen a, a builder do that before. You know, like usually it's either, it just, it's like a fender, it drops down yeah. and, and that's the end of it. You need a string tree and it changes a whole lot about how it plays. Yeah, or you scarf joint. But I mean, this is, I think we've honestly had, we can count maybe on one hand, the the amount of bases that have broken at the volute area. Right. Even though that can an accident, falling off a stand, car accident. Really? Like we, we know about like five instances. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, you have a big thick piece of wood there. Yeah. Really, huh. really, like super rigid. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. And without without string trees, which is great. Cause yes. Because trees suck. They do suck, especially when they're just like the smaller ones. You're, you're putting additional pressure after the, the nut. Yep. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't help a couple anything. strings. Ah, doesn't help with tuning, doesn't help with dead spots, doesn't help with anything. I'm sure it works for some others, you know, designs, but uh, for us, we, we avoid them. So I'll show you this one too, the custom. So this is neat because it's got gold Evo fret wire. Oh, cool. Yeah, very subtle. It's not like super oh, bright Oh, dang. Gold, now, I'm, now I'm regretting it. That's what we should have had over here. That looked pretty cool. Ah. Uh, yeah, pop the oh. neck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it the best, really that's like the best fret wire out there. We, we love this stuff. We use it all the time at, at the shop for because refrets. Because it's like between like the softness of nickel, hardness of steel. Yeah, and it's, it's not as hard it to work it on. Sound, it doesn't sound like stainless because a lot of people want stainless, but it, it, I'm with Paul Reed Smith on the argument. I don't know if people would stab me about it, but but it's super cool that it lasts forever but it has a very specific sound to to stainless steel frets because your strings are touching it it's very apparent to me and so the problem is that it's super cool they last forever if you're in a very high gain situation on a guitar yeah they sound great yeah right because they're very um stainless sounds very transparent yeah right? and very articulate very clean very bright right which is great but if you want a fatter sound it it makes it, it's kind of like, you know how sometimes you can build a bass with an ebony board or a guitar and it can sound too bright and you can't ever get rid of it you no matter what you do. Yeah. You can't dial it back. Like there's always this like really intense. It's like hairy. And, high and to me, right? that's the problem with stainless frets is if, if it's going on a high gain metal type of guitar type of bass, then it's great. But some people, it turned into a thing on the forums where just everybody said you got to have it, right? Yep. And so then it's like, if you're, if you're playing through an Aguilar, in bass world, if you're playing through an Aguilar and you're trying to play some fat, funky beats, it's not going to sound good. You no, know? not great. But and the, and EVO the builders golds, not going to be happy. But the EVO too. Golds do. They do. They yeah. sound great and they're denser and they look really cool. They look really neat. Yeah. Like from afar, it, they almost don't look gold. Yeah. They're great, great, great frets. They're my favorite frets. Uh, this is the color too, well. right? It's like, it's like a blue, yes. like bluish black. So he wanted, he wanted to look so dark blue it is almost black so in some lightings it was blue some other lighting it was uh, matte black that's cool so it's a completely like custom color at that custom point color yeah it said lumen lay here lumen lay and then this looks like a like a status led that's a battery uh, indicator light no way yeah that's cool yeah not something you normally do um touring musician you know it, it's nice to have that that safety net yeah but the the preamps are so low draw you should get like it's a nine volt preamp, maybe about six hundred hours of play out of it. Wow! Um, and the nice thing too is, you know, you can you can bypass the preamp. So if your battery dies on a gig, you don't have to turn around, pop the battery out. Of course, yeah, you bypass just pop up and pass mode. And that's your own preamp design. Is our own preamp? Yeah, yeah. It's made for uh, made for us by a fellow named Jace. Oh, sorry, this is a uh, Peak uh, Gary Poplowski. Yeah, been making our preamps. Oh man, wow, thirty five plus, what thirty five years or so? Wow. Made in Hamilton. That's one of the things I think is really interesting also, too, is that when you have a, a really good builder, and I'm, I'm not going to say that you aren't a good builder if you don't have this, 
But I, I always love to see somebody who has a pickup and preamp design. Right? Like an in-house design? Yeah, because you know, if you're building the instruments, you can build the pickups to those instruments and vice versa because you know pickups 100% will change the sound of your oh, yeah. instrument completely, Number right? Um, I mean, obviously that's what produces the sound, literally. Um, but I just, I just like it. I just think it's a great sign. And there's some things that you want this this guitar with these pickups in the specific because that's like the tone that they're known for. Yeah. But I just, I just like it. I think it shows a really uh, large amount of, of insight into the building and like a lot of, um, you know, it's like a cohesive package where it wasn't like, oh, I'm just a wood, woodworker or something like that. This is on it, the market. Like, let's, let's throw these. Oh, let me throw throw these that works. EMGs in or whatever, um, like it, these Duncans in or something, yeah. like which is fine. There's like there's no problem with it. I just like it. I think it's just really really neat when you see a builder that can do the whole package. It's the control of it too. It's hard to do. It is. So so those pickups, uh, those are made for us by Jason Brown. He used to work in this building when we were known as the Guitar Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so he's off doing his own repairs and winding pickups. So those are still made in Hamilton designed in correlation, you know, with coll collaboration with Jason. Uh, the nice thing is, is you've got the control, right? right. So if you, if you want to tweak this and that, uh, I mean, our volume isn't so high that we can't pivot quickly enough. Right. Uh, yeah, and they sound fantastic. They're like a beefy, single coil jazz pickup. Right. Yeah, and Jason's awesome. Really good set of ears. We, we get along well in terms of what we deem the ideal tone. Yeah. It's pretty much the deal, yeah. Huh? Yeah, the wall of necks that are, are to be fret dressed. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this. Uh, this is a new finish. Uh, we've always done coral pinks. Yeah. Uh, but we're now switching that up to uh, this coral sandy color, which is essentially a Fender Flamingo. I love, I love corals. Yeah. Flat top as well. So they don't always have to be two tone or with binding. Yeah. Yeah, I love that coral color. You notice too that the form is still carved as well. Yeah, so you're not sitting on a hard edge. The f you said the what? Yeah, so this forearm carved uh, is still carved back. So when you're playing, you're, you're not having your forearm rest on this hard. Oh, forearm. Forearm. Yeah. yeah. For <laughs> forearm, forearm. I was like, forearm. I'm tongue tied, I apologize. <laughs> What, what, what kind of form? Yeah. What are you talking about? Is this talk base in here? Great place, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. That's funny. That's gorgeous. Super cool. Yeah. Amar, are your hands falling off yet? Did you lose feeling so in your You in your so arm? steady. It, I'm trying to be. It's hard. <laughs> My back actually hurts. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I want to show you is uh, pick guards. So for the VFs and the BNs, We'll do wooden pick guards from time to time that are reinforced with a metal back plate. Oh, smart. Yeah, just ensure that they don't split at the screws, it doesn't warp. Now, is that two pieces that just sit on top of each other like the old Fender style? Yep. Yep. So it's a veneer that's glued on. And we, we pin these down to blocks just to make sure they don't start curling up yep. prematurely. And that's roasted ash. That's so cool. It's really cool to see all those little tiny attention to details like pinning it so it doesn't, so it doesn't warp and like, it's just amazing to see all these little uh, uh, attention to detail things. There's so many, like, I mean, just just like with these pickup covers, there's so Once you get into, like, building the base is one thing, but then being able to do stuff like that is a whole other series of, of issues. It's, such a, it's such a learning curve. Right. Uh, my, my, my dad's been doing it for, officially, at a phase, 45 years. He's still learning. Yeah. And then trickling these things down to us. So It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, you never stop learning. These are neat. Exposed pole deluxe walnut shells. So that's your typical pickup, but with exposed poles? Uh, this, is, this is the deluxe with the humbucking pickups. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, we'll, we'll always expose the poles on, on that Right, model. of course. Yeah, that's and that's so cut right cool. from the same top as that build that we saw. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's sort of like the whole shebang. 